Welcome back to PSC's Tech Bytes. This is the finale episode of the series about PMPJS in PSC's Tech Bytes. Uh, this is episode number 10 about PMPJS, and today I want to talk with you about how you can leverage PMPJS to play with users. Specifically, you can get information about the current user using your uh, uh, SharePoint framework web part, for example, or your client side solution. You can get the list of the site users. You can even add or remove users, as well as you can ensure users. You can also read the groups that a user belongs to if you need to provide some kind of uh, authorization rules in your client side logic. So, let me move to the demo environment and let me show you how to play with users in PMPJS. As usual, let's start having a look at the client side web part that I created and then we will see the inner workings of that one. So this is a sample web path through which you can get information about the current user. For example, I can get the current user login name. And as you can see here, I've got the user login name of my currently connected user. And in the console log, we can see the object that we can get back from PMPJS whenever we ask for the information about the current user. We can get the list of users uh, of the current site, uh, and it will be the list of the user uh, login names for all of these users. And again, I have a collection, an array of user objects, or I can ensure a new user. So for example, I can say that I want to ensure this new user uh, with this login name. And by doing that, uh, I will be able to get back a response, uh, which will be the ID of the user in the current site collection in which I am and I will get back a complex type, uh, which will include a data property where I can see all of the information about the user that I just ensured. So let me move to Visual Studio Code and let me show you how this client-side web part works. As usual, I'm using uh, PMPJS as the uh, reference external package for uh, having these functionalities available. And inside my client-side web part, uh, I am providing in the properties of the React component that I use to render my web part, uh, the SharePoint framework context. Then inside the React component, first of all, I get the uh, context from the uh, component properties and I set up the uh, SharePoint context in PPAJS. And then I simply implemented the, the functionality that I showed you through a bunch of custom functions. For, for example, the get current user login name function will use the spobject.web.currentUser to asynchronously get the information about the current user. What I will get back will be an object of type iSiteUserInfo through which I can see the login name, but I can also see information about the email, if it is a site admin user or not, what is the principal type, the title, and some other stuff, some other information about the current user. The same applies to get the list of users, where I will have to do sp.web.siteUsers.get in order to get the whole list of users, and the result will be an array of iSiteUserInfo objects. So exactly like before, but this will be an array of all of the users. Last but not least, uh, to ensure a user, we simply need to app.ensure user. We provide the uh, email or the login name to use for the uh, ensuring of the user, and we will get back an iWeb ensure user result type, which will include again a data property which will be made of the actual local ID of the user in the site collection in which we are, as well as information if the user is a site admin, what is the login name, the title, and some other useful stuff, uh, useful information about the insured user. There are also methods to add or remove users. And for a user, for example, I can read uh, the collection of groups and I can see if those groups uh, uh, contain any special group that I'm looking for in order to, for example, uh, authorize my users to use uh, the application or the solution in which I am. So it is a really powerful set of functionalities that you can leverage uh, to enrich your solutions from a user-centric point of view. As usual, thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it interesting and I'm really looking forward to seeing you next week uh, to talk about a new series of topics. Thank you.